another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are talking about bags. So um, if you've watched that haul video I did from a couple of months ago, look there's my cat, um, you will have noticed that I bought some kits to make bags and these are the bags that I have made up. So there's my um, lovely little cat. <laughs> So this is um, the first bag that I made and it had that lovely sort of wood grain fabric. I really like the bag. It's really big. This is 15 balls in there and as you can see there's still quite a bit of space left. <laughs> um, and with this webbing that I like for the handles. Um, and it came with all kinds of decorative thing items which I sort of hot glued on. Then I made this bag here, which basically um, I changed the pattern uh, because it was just a flat bag. I did it with sugar corners, so now uh, sugar bag corners. So now I have a bag with a base, and then you can put more things in it. And it has my uh, posy in it, the color wash posy, and these are all the leftover. Um, balls of wool and there's a pocket here as well for some tissues I can see in there so um, yeah this is a really big bag as well so that's really good it can take a project I love it when it can do that and then this is the bucket bag that it all started uh, with and this is the one that I spend most time on because obviously it has pockets on the outside but also it has pockets on the inside it has that webbing so this is my Orla Keeley blanket that's um, sort of more than halfway now. These are the three for the border and these are all the um, other colours that I still have. So as you can see, look, there's bag, uh, there's pockets on the inside as well. So really I wanted to combine my <laughs> bag making um, with crochet. So I have made this bag here so it is a huge bag I think it can take more than 15 balls plus your project and it has a lining of some a remnant that I found in my local haberdashery or my local fabric shop and I got this <clears throat> you know to use instead of a you know a, a, a crocheted handle because obviously this is much stronger and yeah, I made the covers here, the granny squares. I made them to sort of be in the same colors as this uh, piece of fabric here. But this is my combination of a crochet bag and a sewing bag. And as you can see, I think the cat approves. <laughs> I have just put all these balls into my new bag. It's 15 balls and it takes it quite easily and as I like this there's space for your project on top um, and yeah look at that it's really big it can take a lot of wool and a big project I am really pleased with this so let's see how I made this now here is what you need for this project um, not only will you need your crochet things, your crochet hook um, to make your panels, you will also need your sewing machine to make the lining and you will also need uh, an iron uh, to do all the interfacing uh, sticking and things like that. So first of all, let's get started on showing you what I did with the panels. So here I have the five panels that I made. This one is just a denim panel. It's just a granny square gone large, basically. And there are 14 rounds in this. The 15th round is going to be the round that I am going to use to attach them. So the first one is the bottom. It's just plain blue. Then I have two designs here, each time interlaced with the waterfall. So denim, waterfall and cream and they end in a different way so this one is waterfall cream waterfall denim and this one is waterfall denim waterfall cream so just the other way around uh, and i've made two of each here 
So these are the ones that we are going to put together to make into a bucket bag in a moment. Um, then we also need a handle. Now I don't crochet my handles anymore. Um, first of all, it's boring. <laughs> it's a very short row uh, and you have to do loads and loads of it. But then um, it stretches. So I have decided that I like this type of... Um, I think they call it in my haberdashery webbing. Um, it's this sort of really tough... It's it's the actual handles that you get when you buy a bag as well. So I think this is much uh, more economical for me anyway. You know, you just pay for it, you sew it on and that's it. <laughs> you don't have to sit there for hours making it and then find that it stretches. So this is a meter. Um, I always buy a meter because I like um, having... Uh, handles that are about 50 centimeters long so that will be ready for later on so you need that if you want to put handles on now the reason why I chose these colors is because I found in my local fabric shop I found a leftover uh, a remnant in I always go and look in the remnant box because I don't need anything mu I don't need much of a, of a of fabric I just need something nice um, and this one was in there, it was 140 uh, centimeters, so there was a meter and a half almost left over. Um, and it was just, you know, like reduced price and I really liked it. So I thought, right, that's going to be the inside of my bag. So here I have cut all my panels ready. Okay, so what I have done is I have cut my panels the size of this plus about two centimeters because um, I'm going to do another round and then I need my sewing um, edge as well. So I, I sew my projects on about a centimetre seam. So this um, will be the inside of my bag, so the lining. So what I am going to do, I'm going to create the outside and then I'm going to make the inside and put them together. I hope you <laughs> get that as well. Okay, and the way you put them together is by using these things obviously these are just two bits that I've cut out to show you but I have cut them to the same size as my inside lining panels and <clears throat> what you do is the following so you have your lining fabric that's going to be on the outside or you know on the inside of your bag then you want this fabric to be a little bit more sturdy so your bag stands up so you put this on it this is called Vlieselin interfacing and I don't know whether you can see it this is a soft side and this is little blobs on here those little blobs are glue so what I do is you take your fabric you place the glue down onto your fabric and then I steam iron it it says with a moist cloth but that's all too complicated for me so I just use my steam iron for 15 seconds and then you will find that it is stuck to it. Okay, so that's what you want. Now, this panel is a lot sturdier and if you, you know, it will stand up, right? So that's, that will make our bag a lot sturdier. But then we have to somehow stick our crochet bag outside to the inside lining. And this is glue so here we have a layer of glue can you see that and a piece of paper okay so what you do with this once you have this stuck together you then place this over the top you iron it again no steam this time and then you peel off the paper the glue will be glued down, obviously it isn't now, I've just taken it apart, yeah? So the glue will be glued down on there. Once you've got that, once you're in that situation, you then put the crochet over. Now, one problem, do not iron the crochet, obviously. But what I am going to do is iron this side again, hoping that the glue will get enough heat to just stick to the crochet. Okay, so this is the plan. <laughs> I will be back in a moment to tell you whether it worked or not. So 
this to tell you um you know how this will work so in a way with combining this this is called bonder web and this you're creating a sort of interface in that is double-sided glue and then you can glue it to the lining and glue it to the outside and you have what could possibly you know what normally is a sturdy bag like the bags I have made before which I showed you at the beginning of the video those are all done in this same way so because I had fabric on both sides it didn't matter that I was ironing it a lot obviously this time I'm going to have to be a lot more careful for ironing it when um, you know I'm fusing it together so to speak but we'll see how that goes so I have here my crochet panels ready which we are going to crochet together in a moment i have here also ready my panels with the interfacing i have not put that sticky on it yet so that's cut ready as well here we go see that's cut ready so once i have sewn them together that's when i cro that's when i iron this on it's going to be a little bit hard to iron it on while it's sewn together because it will be have a bag shape but I don't like iron, I don't like sewing it with this on, with the glue on, okay, because it doesn't go through my machine easily. This, my machine doesn't mind, although it's thicker, the glue it makes it, uh, yeah, makes it funny. So I then iron it on as best I can, then we will fuse it all together. Hopefully it will work. So let's get started on putting our squares together. Now, for, for the moment, we are putting the bottom one to the side. We don't need that. I am putting the four sides together first. So I've put them alternatively so that we have a design of each alternative. And then we are going to get started on our first square. And we are going to start here and do two sides. Okay, so what we are simply going to do is do another round of granny clusters so i have my slip knot insert your hook and i'm going to get started on the corner so you yarn over into the corner and you do a double crochet now i know i haven't shown you how to do the actual squares i have quite a few videos on how to do a granny square so i will link these below and like i said i've done 14 rounds and i am now doing the 15th round to put it together so here we have now done three double crochets in that corner so that's half a corner that we have done here and now we are just simply going to continue as you are used to with a granny square so clusters of three double crochets all along the line doing your corner here and then clusters all along the line here and i will meet you when i get here so i can show you how to crochet the two squares together I have now made it to the end of my um, second side on my first square. Now I am going to do a chain. Now we are going to put our square like so, take our second square and we are going to do double crochets in the side of that second square but we are going to pull the loop through. So yarn over into the corner pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, doing your double crochet. Then you are going to pull up, take your hook out, go back to the other side and find that stitch. So skipping the chain that we just did, put your loop back on your hook, pull it closed and pull it through. Now we do a second double crochet in that same location and we do exactly the same thing. You pull up your loop, you go to the next stitch on the other side, loop round and pull it through. And again, pull up into the next stitch 
loop back on and through. Now we have done three double crochets here, so that's our first cluster. We finished our first cluster, now we go to the next location for our second cluster. So we get started with our double crochet and again you go and do that loop through thing and off we go again. And this is how you are going to continue looping through each time and you will notice oops, that split a little bit, there we go you will notice that you get this little ridge and that is quite a nice effect you also have a little bit of a chain here going so just leave that as it is, we'll need that later on so now I am going to continue like this all along here. When I get to the corner, I will meet you there. I've made it to the end of the first row here. I have now done these two clusters here, so that's sorted. Now we are ready to do the two chain for the corner. So you do a chain, then you loop up, you go into the corner on the other side, you pull your loop through like so and you sort of do a chain around there and then you do your chain for your second chain. So then you start doing your clusters again. So for the corner I do a chain as per normal then you loop through and then you do another chain okay and that makes your corner then you continue doing the two sides again once again when you have done those two sides you're ready to attach your next square and that's when you do this again so I am now going to continue exactly like this for the rest of my squares. So I have four squares ready and I will also have gone down to this corner here. Right? So I will have a line of four squares and I will be ready to move on from here. Okay? So I will see you when you have done that. I have now attached the four squares together with the loop through method I have gone on the outside of the last square on two sides and have you noticed you know one continuous join so we've started at the top here I'm going to try and finish um, you know when the bag is finished so hopefully there won't be too much sewing in so we're now here and now we are going to turn it all round and so we haven't done this side here so now we are going to go and do a whole side of just granny cluster so two chains for the corner the second corner cluster here there we go and now I am going to go all along until we meet this end here I've now come to the end of this row here and I'm ready to complete my corner because of course we did one side of the corner here I've just done these three here now I'm going to do a chain now here there is you know we did that chain earlier here so there is space for me to find that I don't know where it is exactly I can't really find it but I tend to just go into there where I've just gone in now if you do not do that chain you can't do that you can't go in there so there is a reason why you do that chain and now I'm just going to slip stitch to close that corner sort of speak so this corner is now finished and now we're going to start the next corner by doing a chain and doing the three double crochets on the other side. So now we have bridged that first sort of location here with where the two squares are attached and that is what you are going to do. Look it's straight, it's 
what it needs to look like that's what you're going to do in the other locations as well and like I said we're going to work all the way to there so not going to this side here but I will meet you when you are here I have made it to the end of the long line all along my four squares I've just done my last cluster here I am going to do a chain and now and now of course it splits <laughs> I'm going to do a chain right and now we are ready to put the bottom of our bag on so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing as we did before so I'm going to do that loop through method and let me just see if you're in view here so yeah looping through this way then when I get to here we do the corner and we go along the side hopefully doing the four sides and making our bag okay so let's get started so I've done my chain and I just start again in the corner here with my first double crochet loop up into that first last double crochet there and loop it through and do your second double crochet and you go on as we've done before all along really all along the four sides of the square I have now come to the end of that first side of my bottom I am going to do a chain then I am going to find just in between here enter there and no I should have looped through so keep the loop out find that entrance point there and pull the loop through there we go and do a little chain around it so it secures it and now we do a chain and then we get started on our other side of course now right there's we go so that's the first double crochet we are already attaching it to the second square okay so pull out into that stitch there am I is that the right no that's the chain one two yeah this is the first chain um, stitch here voila there we go and we continue doing immediately the attaching of the second side of our bottom to our second square see sometimes <laughs> There we go right so as you can see now I've turned the corner and my work is also turning because of course I'm going around the square so that's how I'm going to continue all along the four squares and when I get here when we have to connect the last square to the first square that's when I will be back I have now gone all the way round my four squares so I now have actually a, a sort of cube <laughs> um, but I still have this opening here and of course the top is open so it's going well so here I've come to my last corner I've just done my last pull through here so we're going to do the chain pull it through the chain two of that corner on the other side there uh, as we do normally do another chain and then we are going to do here into this here we will do a slip stitch just so that has now closed the bottom so that's all done now right and now we are going to have to do another side to close this up so we started here earlier now we are going to do the pull through by doing what we normally do so we do a chain because that's where we are at the moment and we do a double crochet into that corner there and we pull it through the first one here there we go and off we go so by the time I have finished this round that should have created my sort of you know open cube for my bag 
Right, Whew, we're getting there. I will see you at the top of my round here when I get there. So I've made it all the way up here. I am now ready to do my last little, I think I've done the chain already. Did I, did I not? <laughs> okay, so that was that pull through of that last stitch. Then we do the chain, then we pull it through the chain two of the other side. What am I doing? There you go. And then we do another chain and we connect it to the other side. There we go. So now I have my bag, like so. I have started a second ball of denim. Um, somewhere, somewhere there is a, as you can see, look, I had to attach it. So that's that. I'll have to sew that in in a moment. Um, now I am going to do a couple of rounds of granny clusters because I want it to be a bit higher or I just want an edge around the top. Okay. Then I am going to sew together my lining. And I am also going to attach the lining to the handles or the handles to the lining because I've been thinking about this obviously and I am not going to be able to attach the handles to this, uh, to the crochet. So I'm going to attach it to the lining in such a way that it is like this and that the handle comes out like this so that when we do put the inside let me show you inside so like this so it comes out like this see and I am going to have to do this sewing by hand because I'm never very good at sewing crochet to fabric although it works really well it micro the crochet stretches and then it doesn't look so good on the edge on or on the sort of the last bit is always a little bit funny so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do a couple of rounds of double crochet. Then I am, oh, you know, double crochet clusters. Then I am going to put together the um, the inside lining uh, with my sewing machine because that's the time when that has to come out. So I will see you when I am ready to put it all together. I have now finished my inner lining so I have sewn together five squares this has been divided into two because I didn't have the um, the size left over uh, from my remnant because I made other things as well and I forgot to cut <laughs> these as fast um, so yes yeah, so I've got five squares basically put them together in like a cube like an, an open cube at the top um, so this is my lining, so that's the inside of my bag. I also have attached these uh, handles and I attach them sort of the wrong way, but this is what's going to happen. I'm going to attach it to the outside there like this. So then the handle comes up the right way. So that's done as well. I then attached the the, the 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 here the wadding was already on my um, side here on my lining I have now ironed on this piece of paper which is the glue that sort of the the bonder web to then let me just take this off to then put that hopefully I will iron it my iron is heating up iron it on this side and it will attach to the acrylic crochet on this side so hopefully that will work so let me just tear off <laughs> those pieces of paper on all sides there we go okay so I already took this off because it just came off so there we go so we've now got this sort of flat inner lining <laughs> how does it work anyway Right, it folds down like this, okay? And now, let me just get rid of these pieces of paper. Now we have to attach this to this. 
Now the way I'm going to attach it is obviously by sewing in the lining with um, a, an edge like this. So let me just show you. But of course it also is going to attach by sticking. <clears throat> Hopefully by sticking. If it doesn't stick then I will just have to give it little stitches here and there. Um, I'm hoping to avoid doing too many stitching because I'm stitching this by hand. Um, when I stitch by machine crochet to fabric it does work but in a way that the the crochet always stretches out and then towards the end of the row I always end up with too much crochet and not enough fabric so that's why I decided to actually um, you know sew this by hand. Now this seems to be fitting so that's okay. I am just going to get my pins out and I am just gently going to see I know this is the amount of seam that I need here so I'm going to just attach this like that there we go so I'm going to hold it in place with some pins so you line up the edges the seams here for the corners there we go so hopefully if we fold this sort of about the same height then we should be able to make this line up I measured everything depending on how big my granny squares were okay so when you start if you start doing this bag um, remember your tension and your crochet is going to be a different size from mine so that's why I haven't sort of mentioned any sizes too much because obviously this square is going to be your size so that's, that's what I um, worked towards so always first of all make your squares and then I um, measured the squares and then I made sure that the lining met up with that so it seems to be working that seems to be okay look so now that we've got it folded in the handles come out the way they should do yeah i think that's looking good so let's just put a few more stitches in to keep it together and in a moment what i want to do is to help me to keep it all together is i'm going to put my iron on the bottom here and hopefully it will you know the glue that's on the outside of this from the paper that I've just torn away will just sort of stick to the crochet enough to stick it but not enough to melt it <laughs> that is going to be an experiment isn't it so yeah let's just look at this look this is looking nice I think you know Okay, let's just continue with putting in the lining, lining it up with the seams and then we'll have a quick, and then if it's all disaster, then <laughs> we know not to continue or we'll just make the best of it. Okay. So this is like pinned in, not very well, but I will do a few more pins after I stop filming. I just want to do this. Okay, it's ironing time. Let me just put my ironing board underneath. It's just a metal small mini ironing board that I use for um, you know things like this. So I can just put them on my desk like so. Okay, my iron has heated up. I'm quite nervous actually. <laughs> okay. Right, let's just go for it. And I'm just making sure that I am distributing heat, but not too much in one place. So keeping moving, I think, is going to be important. Let's just press it down. Okay, what do we think? Let's turn it over. This is still okay, but it hasn't stuck. Right. Yeah, so I want to... It needs to stick, obviously. 
and there's yeah that is still not melted so okay <laughs> do we need to do this more I'm just being very careful here um, okay let's just do it again right okay so we've been careful I mean you know I know this is not you know this video obviously I plan to make this I've never made this before I don't want to make two <laughs> because I've already got so many things um, so yeah I am trying this together with you in a way um, I think I want to show you my way of thinking my way of working you know oh has it stuck it seems to have stuck yes okay it's stuck to it the acrylic is still okay yeah look it's stuck to it. okay so what i did just now was press down a little bit harder stayed in the same place okay so let's try that again in another location so where did i do it just now there okay so yeah i mean when you're doing things you know uncharted territory basically take it easy take it carefully like i did earlier you know i thought maybe just careful uh, heat gentle heat everywhere that didn't work so yeah we're going for the press me down really hard and stay in the same place for a little while and the acrylic has oh sorry you can't see uh, the acrylic has survived so I am going for it now I'm now really pressing down staying in the same place for a little while and I'm checking still hopefully I'm not smelling anything funny I mean to be honest I'm not putting the iron directly on the acrylic let's have a look um, oh that was a pin in my fingers yeah look the crochet is looking flatter but I don't think it's looking melted but it's stuck to the base so this is now what I'm going to do I'm going to keep ironing the bottom and I'm going to iron some sort of like half of the side and then I'm just going to sit and do my edging here so it looks nice maybe I could actually I don't know um, I am inclined to sew it by machine shall I try it if I put more pins in see this is it again I am together with you I am trying to come up with better ways of doing this so what if I put a lot of pins in to keep the crochet in place so it can't stretch and then I can sew it because to be honest I was thinking of hand sewing this but it's going to take ages oh, and you know I don't have patience for things like that <laughs> okay can you hear I am actually relieved that this ironing business with crochet on the other side is working okay right let's keep sewing uh, let's keep <laughs> ironing um obviously i still would not recommend um ironing on the crochet side okay um there is a lot of there is no direct heat to the crochet it's you know all you know there is wadding in between and there is this fabric as well so you know right um yeah i think i'm gonna sew it by machine it just it's got do you know it's going to take too long to do it by hand and by machine you actually cannot tell it's really good you cannot tell that you've machined onto the crochet Sorry, I, I'm not really... I am trying to be very careful with the iron here. So I'm not looking in the viewfinder. I am looking at my finger. So that's why it's sometimes out of the view. Out of view. I do apologise. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so you cannot tell that it's been... Um, 
sewn on, you know. And it will be nicer for the lining to have a little edge here, which is what will happen if I uh, machine sew it, and that will make it look nicer. So, yeah, so I've now properly done the bottom, I think, and most of it, I can see that this still here hasn't melted, but most of this here has melted onto the base. So that's good. So I know that works. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to continue doing some ironing, the rest and the sides, uh, most of the sides actually, and then I will pin everything really, really well, and then I'm going to sew it by machine. And I will be back to show you um, how that ended. <laughs> and then, of course, we will go and do a photo shoot in the park. I can't wait for that. Right, I will see you later. Right, I've ironed it all. So all the sides have completely been ironed. And I have to say, adherence is, is reasonably good. In mo it's adhered in most places. I've just found some places where it hadn't, so I re-ironed it. And I think it's it's done really well, uh, surprisingly. I was, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised about the, um, the result here. So that's worked really well. And then, as you can see, I have put pins in. So I'm now going to do the machine sewing. Um, I'm going to put this down and this up and then hopefully this won't stretch too much. Okay, so I will be back with the result. <laughs> but yeah, oh, it's looking really good. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh my goodness me. Is this so much nicer than what hand sewing would have been? It's working really well. Um, yeah, so look at this. Look how lovely this is. And because I've pinned in so many places, the crochet isn't stretching. You know, it's staying where it should be. So it's going really well. And I do hope that once I've gone all the way around, it will look fabulous. <laughs> There we go, look. Yeah, I'm really liking this. And as I said, you can't even tell that you've uh, sewn into it. And I'm using black thread as well because I did not have, look, black, I did not have um, dark blue. So yeah, I think um, this works really well and I'm going to continue. So here it is, the finished bag. I am so pleased with it. It takes 15 balls quite easily with space for your project and even a bottle of water and your uh, hook case. So I am really, really pleased with it. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. And I do hope you have enjoyed watching this and that I have inspired you to make one as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.